and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. But today, however, we're not looking at a bad comic book. As requested by a Patreon sponsor, today we shall be looking at a video game, Vampire the Masquerade of Bloodlines. And naturally, you can see why I would be covering this, considering the amount of vampire material I've covered on this show, like, uh, Scarlet Number One from five years ago. Or Anita Blake, Vampire Hunter! It, oh, wait, Harvey reviewed that. I didn't. Um, well, okay, last week we had vampires, and the week before, a uh, Nazi vampire. I would say I'm doing this because it's my propensity for video games, but I reviewed less of those than I have comics featuring vampires. Not to mention, my interest in video games is pretty limited. The majority of games that I play these days all have characters that look like this. Isn't this something that Maven of the Eventide should be reviewing? Most certainly so. However, I now have this child of darkness who, for the time being, I must focus on raising properly until his teeth develop for him to become a true creature of the night. Yes, what beautiful music he makes. Aren't you married? Couldn't you get your husband to watch the kid while you did the review? What husband? Feed me your rage, Tumblr. I said no! Anyway, go back to your little review now. Okay. Oh, and tell that Morty guy he's a creepy werewolf lover. Actually, I'm pretty sure he's into mummies, but fortunately I don't have to worry about him for another four months. So anyway... Whoa, 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 wait a second. What about me? Fear fan from Terror Obscura? No! Horror guru? <laughs> no, I got him tied up in the back. Bayless? Aw, oh, come on! He hasn't reviewed a horror movie in like four months. And, uh, are we even allowed to mention him anymore? I mean, he doesn't work at Channel Awesome anymore. I don't know. Are you on Channel Awesome? Yes! I am Count Jackula from the planet Dracula, where bad movies stalk the night. And I've been on the site for like six months now. Beth Elderkin? Oh, come on, now you're just being a dickhole. Yeah, I am, and I think this bit has gone on long enough. I've already lost like half the viewers because I haven't talked about the game yet. Okay, yeah, but I'm an actual vampire from outer space. If you could wrap your little mind around that. And I've actually played this game that you're reviewing and probably playing for the first time. And I used to be a White Wolf freelance artist, so I am perfect for this review. Well, come back when you've done another complete playthrough, and then we'll talk. Bye! Aww. I want to play a Malkavian again. Dickhole. So, anyway, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. The game is based off of White Wolf's World of Darkness tabletop RPG. Or, for those who don't know anything about tabletop RPGs, think Dungeons and Dragons, but with vampires and werewolves instead of magic missiles and falling rocks. The game's development was rife with problems, mostly with the game engine and the difficulties they ran into with it, particularly because they had to write code with a system they were unfamiliar with. Add on the complexity of the game's various modes of play, first-person shooting, third-person melee, stealth mechanics, branching dialogue options, and other aspects that hadn't been tested with the engine before, coupled with going over budget to the point where a lot of the production team worked overtime unpaid because they wanted to truly finish it and make it a good game, and naturally the game was basically released unfinished and untested by Activision. The game was not a commercial success upon release, and it's believed that its failure led to the demise of Troika Games, the developers. However, since then, unofficial patches have been released, developed mostly by fans to basically fix the game and restore the missing content which was something that people were very adamant to me about getting, which I did, though I admit I was tempted to play the unfinished game just for the joke potential. But since I did use that patch, let's dig into Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines and see me review a video game for the first time in like five years. It could be your 
thing we have to do is create a character, which involves making several choices about the character we're playing. There are a number of different vampire clans to choose from, and there aren't enough hours in the week for me to release a review based on every path, so I decided to play as a Bruja. Bruja... Broje... Brojamalaya. They're known basically as brawlers and fighters, which appealed to me in this case. Why is that? Well, a big component of the game is the varied political machinations and dealings of the various clans, and I don't really play video games to be immersed in what melodramatic vampire is in command of the other community theater vampires. I am but a simple man who plays video games mostly for fun, but also to act out aggressive feelings caused by awful comic books that are best not expressed in real life. Also, my desire to befriend fantastical creatures and stuff them in tiny balls. But yeah, because of this, my playthrough experience might be different from your own if you choose a different path. After setting up your character stats, or letting them be automatically assigned for you based on a series of questions, the opening cinematic shows your character, who appears to have dyed himself purple, having some fun times with a lady vampire, who subsequently turns you into a vampire because some people are just kinky like that. However, it seems the vampire authorities in this world have telepathic cock-blocking powers since they instantly know that this woman has turned you. And you both get staked. Well, that game was terrible. I created a character sheet and didn't even get a chance to defend myself. Zero out of ten, too much water. Actually, in this world, being staked is only a minor inconvenience for vampires. Garlic works. A cross? Shove it right up their ass. <laughs> a steak? Only if it catches you in the heart, and then it just paralyzes you. Running water? That's no problem. I bathe. Occasionally. Now, a shotgun blast to the head. Oh, that's trouble, boy. Fire? That's real trouble. Sunlight? Well, you catch the sunrise and it's all overkill. Get it? Or, you know, beat them to death with a baseball bat. That works too. I guess. Anyway, you're brought before this council of... Holy crap, I was kidding before about this being community theater. Anyway, this dude, Prince LaCroix, is pissed off that the woman, whatever her name was, sired you without asking permission first. See, the masquerade of the title refers to how vampires keep themselves secret to the outside world. They don't cause trouble, they don't attack people, they don't do anything to risk exposure. As such, while they'll feed on humans, creating new vampires is kind of a big deal, and you need to ask permission to do so. But I don't think it's really anything to lose your head over. Fortunately, the same fate does not befall our purple protagonist, who is instead furnished with a crappy apartment and with Bender, I mean, Smiling Jack, who provides the tutorial and information that we need now that we're a vampire. That's what it's all about right there. Alright, now, you got the blood, you're feeling all kick-ass, feeling better than your best day living, but wait, it gets better. Yeah, that's fine, man, but I do want a cape, you know. Now, as I said, the game is based on World of Darkness, meaning there's a lot of vampire clans and affiliations and politics. But we're gonna skip over this and focus on the story and game on its own merits. After the tutorial level, you're free to explore Santa Monica and start picking up quests. The main storyline one starts off with us getting some explosives for a dude named Mercurio so they can blow up a warehouse from a vampire gang called the Sabbat. There are various side quests to be done in the game to get more experience points, as well as some extra cash. They can range anywhere from reuniting a thin-blood Australian surfer vampire with his love and sire, to investigating a lost bounty hunter working for a bail bondsman. That quest leads us to a prosthetics maker and his... Uh... Welcome to my creepy basement. The bounty hunter decides after having his finger chopped off that he's really not interested in this line of work anymore, so I have to take up the job. And that really shouldn't surprise anyone. This is an RPG, meaning we are the only person in the entire world who is capable of doing anything or accomplishing anything. One quest has you sent to a haunted hotel, but really, what could possibly be terrifying about this? This game is all about talking and character stuff and various vampire philosophies and, uh... He's watching. Sweet merciful crap! Ah! Okay, okay, just... Just need to get myself together. I mean, just because this place is haunted by a pissed off ghost doesn't mean I should be scared. Oh dear God, why would you draw that decapitated child? No, 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 this isn't right. 
I'm a goddamn vampire! I will not be scared by ghosts and- oh, For the love of- Why am I in Freddy Krueger's boiler room? What is hurting me? I'm a goddamn vampire! I don't care how many lamps you throw at me, I'm not gonna review them! Okay, that's it! Screw this place! Screw your faces! Screw your credenza! Screw your falling elevator! Screw your stupid pictures you keep throwing at me! Screw your chandelier! Screw your pots and pans! Screw your weird-ass ghostly flashback and creepy music and creepy laughing! No, I'm not gonna get out! You're gonna get out! Come on, Jack Torrance! Come and get me! Who's Johnny now, asshole? I'm a goddamn vampire! I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! So, um, <clears throat> yeah, that level's actually pretty fun and terrifying. Admittedly, some of it is basic jump scares, but I'm a sucker for haunted house stuff, and frankly, it's refreshing just to have a spooky house after the murder basement. Whether you want to or not, you're embroiled in these various power struggles, in more ways than one. You meet vampire Harley Quinn here, named Jeanette, and her sister Therese, who control a good chunk of the vampire going-ons in Santa Monica, and eventually either have to side with one or another, or, if your stats are high enough, persuade them that they're stronger together than apart. That's what I eventually did, after like three different attempts and backtracking to try to get more experience points to get them working together. After that, you blow up the warehouse in a stealth mission that quickly turns into a not stealth mission as it happens. Afterwards, we meet up with this guy named Beckett, who just kind of appears throughout the game to offer advice and look cool. After that, we're sent to downtown LA to do some more side quests and advance the main storyline. We're immediately set upon by the Sabbat, but are rescued by a guy named Nines Rodriguez, who is in charge of the Anarchs, a vampire clan. Well, I'd say he's in charge, but really, as the name implies, they're more like anarchists. They don't like Prince LaCroix or the Camarilla, his particular clan. They see him and the Camarilla as authoritarian jackasses who impose unnecessary rules for everyone to follow, and that everyone is part of their clan whether they want it to be or not. Sounds kind of like my situation, where I am constantly dragged into doing everyone else's else's jobs for them and become part of the vampire club without asking. We also encounter this guy, who likes to leave vague poetic messages for us. Neo, are you ready to learn the truth about the Matrix? Let me give you some advice, young one. Your survival in kindred society will often depend on your ability to find out yourself what is going on around you. Remember that well. Yeah, thanks, dude. Say, where do I get a coat like that? Or a cape? I'm still waiting on my cape. Anyway, while we search for my cape, let's talk gameplay for a second. First and foremost, guns are useless except for certain boss fights where you want to keep your distance. Unless you've buffed up your stats like crazy or are using a shotgun at close range, don't bother with guns against the average thug. Most enemies take about three to five hits to go down as you progressively get stronger and increase your stats. And the fun thing is that your stats really do make a difference in this game. Higher intimidation, persuasion, and seduction give you alternate choices for some dialogue and sometimes allows you to make matters end in a much more favorable way than if you just killed people. Speaking of, killing people is both bad and not bad. See, despite being a blood-sucking monster, you still have humanity points, and the more humanity you lose, the more of a feral beast you are. You lose points by killing innocent people or cops just trying to do their jobs or whatever, but you don't lose them for self-defense. You're a monster now, make no mistake. One of the damned and the fallen. You need to hold on to every last shred of humanity you have. I, 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 I said innocent humans. If some asshole levels a 12 gauge your way, you drain him, skin him, and bash in his skull. Self-preservation is a vital part of humanity after all. Um, except how does my vampirism tell the difference? You just admitted I'm a monster and undead and all. If it's just a matter of my own mental state, couldn't you just mentally justify killing anyone from a pragmatism standpoint? Hell, we meet a vampire who was overcome by her bloodlust and frenzied, and was pretty horrified that she'd killed someone, even if it was out of her control. Did she lose some humanity for that? Anyway, since you're a vampire, you need to drink blood. Now, while you can't kill people in cold blood without losing your humanity, apparently your soul or whatever doesn't mind just randomly attacking homeless people as long as you don't kill them. So, just to keep track of this, random attacks on innocent citizens, not evil at all as long as they don't die. Killing a cop who's shooting at you, well, you're Satan's best buddy. 
You can also attack and kill rats, God's most hated of creatures, I guess. But the blood you get out of it is pretty small in quantity, so you need quite a few rats to fully replenish your health and blood supply. Other ways of getting blood? Talking to this creepy psycho in the local blood bank who will sell you blood bags, seducing women in clubs who will happily let you nibble on their necks, or luring hookers into parking garages. Uh, lady, I fully support your choice to be a sex worker, but do you think it's a good idea to only be wearing a thong and tight shirt in the middle of the night? During a rainstorm? Also, should I be censoring her? I'm not certain. These particular hookers get around, too. Look, they're all over the city! They're having a busy night if they're traveling around everywhere like this. Oh, and that's another thing. As far as I can tell, this entire game, like 28 hours of gameplay, all takes place in a single night! Yeah, they claim it's over several days, but the sky never changes. The morning sun never comes out to vanquish the horrible night. I mean, yeah, this is Los Angeles, but I don't think the smog problem was this bad. Anyway, you use your blood pool to access certain spells and abilities that will heal you or increase your stats. You'll probably get the most mileage out of Blood Buff, which temporarily raises your stats, which is especially helpful when you're doing lockpicking and breaking into places. And once again, breaking and entering and theft are A-OK -okay for our humanity and for staving off the beast. So anyway, LaCroix sends us off to investigate the Ankaran Sarcophagus. According to legend, it contains an ancient powerful vampire called an Antediluvian, and if the sarcophagus is opened, it'll bring about the end of the world. Or at least the end of all vampires. Oh no, that would just be so terrible, we must work so hard to prevent this. I don't really want to give away too much of the plot beyond this, and believe you me, there is a lot of plot. And the thing is, part of what makes video games the unique kind of medium that it is, is the fact that it's the player's choices that shape how the game and story develops. Sure, not every game has branching paths, but this one does. So who the hell am I to say that one choice is more legitimate than another? After all, that's why it gives you a choice system to begin with. The experience is yours, and it makes you feel like you're actually in the game. You want to play as the David Boreanaz vampire with a soul, never take advantage of anyone virtuous type? Or do you want to be a self-important asshole who doesn't give a damn about all this vampire politics bullcrap and just wants some more money and spend hours dancing in the club? Or do you want to do something in between, where sometimes you're a dick and sometimes you're vampire Superman? The choice is yours! Provided you can avoid getting shot at by random street gang wars that erupt for no rhyme or reason. What I can tell you is how I chose to develop things. I decided to eventually side against LaCroix on the basis that I never liked his stupid face and how the only reason he was in any way intimidating was because he had an actual intimidating person working for him while he was too busy cleaning his suit with the red trim underside of the lapels. Plus, the first apartment he gave me was really kind of a dung heap, and while the second one he gave me was nicer, I find it difficult to believe that with an organization this large and a huge-ass tower that he lives in, he didn't already have specialists he could send in to do all this crap, and he really didn't need me risking life and fang over this. Plus, some other plot stuff convinced me to side with the Anarchs, but you can find that out for yourself if you wanted to play it. Or just read Wikipedia. And honestly, while I sympathize with all parties in this conflict, the clan war didn't really capture my attention. However, this game did give me a conflict I was invested in. The reason is because the Chinese are trying to stop the Americans from fighting an ancient space probe sent by the Beta Centaurians. And why? Because the Beta Centaurians are giving space technology to the Chinese to get back at the Andromedans, aka the Greys, for giving space technology to the Americans in the 50s. Where the hell is my game about the secret conspiracy of the Andromedans and their own ongoing war? I'd play the hell out of that game. Anyway, while LaCroix may be a grade-A douchebag at times, he's at least an equal opportunity employer. Yep, after that gallery, I didn't think I'd be able to get a job guarding a room full of jack squat from the boogity man. But then I get a call offering me this sweet night shift slot, and I'm back in a security game. This is Chunk, probably my favorite character in the game. He's just a working class dude trying to make a life for himself whenever I'm not lying to him in order to get inside of an art gallery so I can slash some paintings and accidentally summon some kind of blood-based demon. Plus, he also seems to have shades of a Minnesotan accent, don't you know? So I feel like there's a real ding-dang connection there, boy howdy. The sound design is... 
iffy, which might just be because of my own computer, but other times it's clearly the game's fault. There are points where things are presented to us in stereo! Meaning that things are reverbing like crazy. But like I said, sometimes I can't hear what the characters are saying because somebody decided to turn the music up too loud! The voice acting is mixed. Most of them turn in pretty good performances, nothing that will win any awards, but they do their job and are convincing. But then, well... I'm she, Demon Hunter. I come to the city for the blood of the demon that kill my master. Do not interfere. My revenge will cut through you if it has to. I'm just so torn up over it, can't you tell? My life is constant indifference. I mean pain. Despite the patch, the game still has its fair share of glitches, some of them game-breaking. Just for example, while in an apartment, I threw a camera around, much like how I often want to when I'm doing this show, and then talked to a guy and told him he should leave town. There's then supposed to be a cutscene of him leaving. However, the game bugged and he got trapped on the throne camera and was never able to get around it. Another example is when I actually got stuck behind a dumpster and couldn't jump out and escape. Admittedly, I'm the kind of guy who obsessively saves all the time, so I was able to escape both of these, but it's still a pain in the ass since it usually means backtracking a bit. And some glitches are more annoying than game-breaking, like when I went on a ship to get a bunch of information and a cop was planted here by LaCroix to help. Unfortunately, the game glitches so that, well, he does this. Yo, Pally, over here. That's you, right? Is that you? That's you, right? Is that you? Jeez. That's you, right? Is that you? That's you, right? Is that you? Pally, over here. That's you, right? Yeah? Psst. Come here. Hey, Steve, what's Ron doing over there? Eh, hey, he's just talking to his invisible vampires again. I think he just wants an imaginary friend. Damn fine officer, though. There are little things, too, that aren't glitches, but are kind of head-scratching. For example, you hear cars moving and getting broken into all the time, but the streets are completely devoid of cars, except for the taxi cab that will take you to the four central locations. Santa Monica, Hollywood, Chinatown, and downtown. Although, frankly, the weirdest thing of all this is... Go about your business, citizens! I'm just a random guy running around the streets with a bloody fire axe! Nothing to see here! I don't know, even in a world of vampires and ghosts and stuff, I see a guy running around with a fire axe, and I assume this is happening. <laughs> Sutter Kane. Actually, the most fun things about the game are the little extras that aren't actually part of the story, just added in for humorous content. You saw an example already with the Andromedan plot. That's from The Deb of Night, a late night radio show hosted by Deb, and of course, when you have a late night radio show, all the crazies come out to call in. Or just the lonely. Or the ones who just need some damn emotional support during a difficult time! Um. Well, wouldn't that make you a critic? Look, Deb, they're starting to make me review video games. I just wanted to write, but now they expect me to act and critique and edit and, and there's something about me making a movie now? But of course, the absolute best stuff is the parody commercials on the radio. This summer, all bets are off. The heat is on. The fix is in. The dogs are out. The game is up. Nine out of ten people preferred friggin' chicken over the competition. Why? Cause that's some good f***ing chicken! Looking for something that requires no logons, no unwanted email, coherent sentences, and no technical problems whatsoever? Read a book. Books. The original internet. Democratic candidate Michael Rebens recently sued Senator Robert Bowen for accusing Rebens of being a murderous child pornographer. But Rebens had previously said he was against clogging up courts with frivolous lawsuits. Wouldn't this make him a hypocrite? Would you want a hypocrite as your next congressman? Take control of the noble office pots as they wage slave their secret war against the evil execucons. Office bots, transform and clock in. Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate not accused of being a murderous child pornographer. And some of the side quests are fun just for the kinds of characters you meet. Do you understand that this is an important opening and I, emphasize I, am going to make or possibly break this restaurant? Look, my reviews have destroyed whole cities. But of course, there is the mimetic beauty that many have become aware of thanks to Little Karibo's Let's Play of the game, Foxy Boxes. 
And given all the sex content of the game, you would assume Foxy Boxes was a strip club or something, but no, it's a warehouse full of boxes that I presume contain copious amounts of sass. But yeah, there's a lot of sexual content in the game. Aside from questionable business names and prostitutes in their underwear, there's a strip club where you can get a lap dance from a woman in pasties. Most of the NPC women want to have sex with you, and some you can seduce and have sex with. Presumably, anyway. I didn't have a high enough seduction stat to test it with Jeanette, and most of the time seduction is only used so you can feed on them. And you can even create a ghoul named Heather. What's a ghoul? <laughs> well, sort of, but no. Ghouls in this context are humans close to death who have fed on vampire blood. They don't get any real supernatural benefit to it, but it's addictive and pretty much makes them your slave. In this case, you save the life of Heather, and later she says she's now in love with you and will do anything for you. And given the dialogue choices, you can verbally abuse her, or be kind, or send her away so she can live her own life. It's really rather sick and twisted, but this is why a morality system exists in the game to begin with. There are consequences to your actions. And yet, to further the terrifying implications, you can also make your ghoul dress in a few different clothing, including just having her walk around in her underwear. When I first asked for advice on my playthrough, there was an argument that broke out in the comments about whether or not the game was sexist. Do I think so? Eh, not really, but the thing to remember is that something can contain sexist elements, even if on the whole it is not. For example, all the quest-giving female NPCs in the game have their own backstories and characterization and histories, some of them tragic and some of them triumphant in the face of adversity. That is a very good thing. On the other hand, every single one of them is wearing cleavage-exposing outfits. Except for Heather, although again, you can put her in some. Not having played this with a female player character, I don't know if you can put a male ghoul in a thong. And of course, as I said, pretty much all of them want to have sex with your character. The male one, anyway. I don't know if that's the case if you play it as a woman. Although, what I do know from checking out the occasional walkthroughs, sorry guys, needed to do it sometimes, so I didn't spend three hours looking for something, sometimes the game offers women players the chance to sleep with someone to resolve the quest. An option that does not exist for the men. At least I never encountered it. Now, some would argue that vampire stories of the last hundred years have emphasized sexuality anyway. Really, all the classic monsters represent the darker aspects of humanity in one form or another. Animalistic rage, playing with forces we can't handle, the continuing threat of ancient Egypt that sends corpses into the future to menace us. But with vampires, it's the darker elements of sexuality. However, it's pretty telling to me that it's only the female NPCs that deal with sexuality. The men are about friendship, betrayal, political struggles, money that's owed to them, but all the women play up seduction and sex to varying degrees. A lot of their quests don't, but they still deliver the quests in ways implying innuendo and boinking. In fact, the only female NPC with the quest not playing up sex to a degree is Yuki, a Japanese woman seeking out a demon that killed her sensei after her parents were murdered by other demons. It's a straight-up simple revenge quest. And yet some of your dialogue choices joke about tentacle hentai in front of her. Uh-huh. So yeah, I don't think the overall game is sexist, just that it probably needed more of a balance of it. But then again, I am apparently sex negative and a scammer, so what the hell do I know? So, my final scattered thoughts about the game. First and foremost, don't do the zombie mission unless you're really good at it. You have five minutes to keep zombies from escaping a cemetery, but you need to run between the two gates to keep them from busting through. In my humble opinion, there are just too many of them. Just bring the guy who's supposed to be doing it a prostitute so he doesn't want to leave. Next, the sewer level. Because there's always a sewer level. Is far too long and far too repetitive. That being said, the monster designed for the boss in the middle of it... Holy crap, that is some Silent Hill stuff right there. Pants to be darkened. I feel like I should be censoring that thing. Oh, and the stealth mission inside of the Metalhead Industries warehouse can go straight to hell! It's too cramped, there are three guards walking in random patterns, and at one point the game glitched so the stupid guy wouldn't move at all, and then you actually have to get back out of the damn place without being seen, which is just as hard as it was getting in! And, of course, as everyone repeats to you in the game and out of the game, based on the comments I got in anticipation of this, DON'T OPEN IT! This game does not suck. Even with the glitches, it's still pretty fun to play, especially if you do get invested in the overall storyline. 
And hey, nothing made me go, Adamantium Rage! So, at least you've got... Oh, it's on now, asshole! I just got this new Saba, and I'm gonna show you what happens with all work and no play! Horror guru? <laughs> no, I got him tied up in the back. Look at that, chair! Until you finish that Ginger Dead Man 3 review! No! No, I don't want to! Yeah, you're going to! No, yeah, you're going to do it! No! Yeah, 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 Ginger Dead! Yeah, no Gary Busey this time! He fights Gary in this one! You've got no choice! Fucking finish it! Finish it! <laughs> Yeah, but I'm an actual vampire from outer space. And besides, I played this game that you've uh, decided to review here, and I used to work for White Wolf back in the day as a freelance artist, so uh, I'm perfect for this review. Although you probably wouldn't have seen any of the books I appeared in because uh, they're, they're kind of it's a bad vampire book, I mean, it's, it's not a good one. Vampire the Bonering, alright. Well, it was actually, did, did, uh, what was it, Day of Judgment? Or what, oh, really? Oh, yeah, <laughs> it was pretty bad. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs>